Hi, my name is Ryan Rosado. I work here at your Clarksville Montgomery County Public Library. And today we have a very special guest, Miss Joanne Mallory Burgess. How are you, ma'am? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great, great. Um, thank you for joining us today. And um, today we are going to discuss your magnificent, wonderful book, The Odyssey of Burt High School. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, are you from Montgomery County? Are you from Clarksville? Yes, I was born in Montgomery County and the Walnut Grove community. Oh, okay. Yes. I am the second oldest of 11 oh, siblings. Oh, jinkies. Okay, uh, yeah. Well, eight, <laughs> and we grew up on a farm. Oh, wow. And our parents really instilled in us the importance of education mm -hmm. because was a close-knit family. We had ancestors who were not privileged to go to school. Mm -hmm. And it was so important to them that they saw the younger generation go to school. Yes, and even though we had a one-room school house to attend, and we had to walk five miles one way, oh, wow. rain, sleet, or 100 degrees, Yes, ma'am. we had to walk, but they instilled in us to get this education. Yes, and my daddy's famous saying was, this is the only thing you can get in life that no one can take from you mm -hmm. because it's in your head yes, and people don't crack heads. <laughs> so that was, and we remember that. I met with some of my siblings the other day and we were talking about that, wow. how he instilled that in us. So working on a farm, I bet you, you learned a lot of skills in regards to working with each other, depending on the, upon each other, having each other's back. I thought that was, that was something that you learned as well. Well, I have five brothers and five sisters. Oh, wow. And the men folk did the work, and the girls were noted for taking out the lemonade and the iced tea or the water to the yes. farm. And, of course, we did cooking, and we can. Our mother was a genius. She knew how to take care of us. We can count hundreds of jars of food that she would put up in the summer to make mm -hmm. sure to get us through the winter. I can remember when the ice man would come through uh -huh. and the milkman. Yes. So she really taught us how to be self-sufficient, mm -hmm. even though it was important to get an education. You still needed to know how to survive. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you went and you walked five miles every day yes. um, to school, and that was that was going to Burt. No, High school, this was Walnut it? Grove, the elementary school. Uh -huh. See, the county children lived out in the country, mm -hmm. and you had a one-room school from grades one through eight, mm -hmm. and all of the grades were in this one room. Yes, ma'am. So you went to eighth grade eight years, eight times. Yes, yeah, yeah. But when we got ready to go to Burt High School. Let me back up and say before my time of going to Burt High School, when mm -hmm. I have ancestors who talked about their generation. Mm -hmm. Now, what time frame are we talking about? We're talking what? about the early 30s and 40s. Yes, ma'am. There was not any transportation mm -hmm. for the rural Negro children mm -hmm. to get to Burt. Yes, ma'am. And, of course, the uh, white children went to Clarksville High. Mm -hmm. But they had to leave home on Sunday afternoon. And you will see that testimonies of that from personal interviews in the book. Oh, yes. When the people talked about leaving home on Sunday, catching a ride into town with the teacher. Oh. And then if the parents were able, they would pay rent for them to live with someone oh, wow. in town. Okay. And then they could go back home on Friday evening but they would only be home those two days and would have to come back to school on sun, um, gotcha. Sunday evening. So they, they, they were away the whole, the the whole, whole school week. week. Can you imagine uh -huh. a 14, 15, 16 year old child mm -hmm. having to leave home on Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. and go to town and stay with strangers Oh wow! and then go back. Yes, now, I, one lady in the book, Miss Richburg, talked about her parents were able to hire a taxi driver Oh. to transport them from Salem to mm -hmm. the Burt School. Yes. And you have many testimonies of yeah. how some people went to school and how and the way they went. But you also have testimony of people who said we were not able to go because our parents could not afford to pay rent. And I 
it was like a dollar and fifty cents a week. Sure. Mm -hmm. But parents didn't have that money, mm -hmm. and everybody did not have a car. Mm -hmm. But when you move over to just before my generation, if you heard of Judge John Cunningham, mm -hmm. he was the chairman of the board. Yes. And he sat in a special session in 29, it's in the book, that we made provision for the white children to get to high school, but we have Negro children in the rural area mm -hmm. who qualify and are able to go to school and we need to make provisions. And uh -huh. that's when he started the buses gotcha. so that the children could go from the county to Bird High School. And that was a game changer because then you didn't have to worry about uh, yes. rent, you didn't have to worry about the, the transportation, the means of getting back and forth. Was the bus system, was it a daily thing or was it a weekly thing? Oh, right? it was daily. It was daily, yes. oh wow. Okay. John Cunningham, when he, he was, you know, you heard the saying uh, when Someone speak, then people listen. But he was chairman of the board. Mm -hmm. He was very significant in this town at yes, that time. Yes, and you would hear and read about testimonies of people talking about how he made sure that some of the children had change in their pockets mm -hmm. and when they would walk to school and the uh, little snack bus would yeah. come through. Yeah. And so everyone talked about John Cunningham. He was very significant. And As are we talking about the same John Cunningham John that has a bridge? Judge, yes, yes. The one that the over, bridges are named for. Over by the, by the Clarkson Marina. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. because before that bridge was built, people had trouble getting from that uh, cabin road mm -hmm. into town mm -hmm. because he had to come on a ferry and it was like 15 or 25 cents. And a lot of people didn't have that kind of mm -hmm. money back then. Yeah. But he built that bridge. He made a lot of people happy in this town. Yeah. And his name still ring. I take that bridge every day. I live in Aaron. Do I, you? I live in Houston County, so I okay. take that bridge a lot. Okay. Yes, and, and it has been improved. Indeed. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So getting, getting back to you, um, so you were a graduate of Burt High School, um, I yes. believe class of 1958. Yes. And you have that, your portrait over here right behind us. Yes. Um, then after, after attending Burt High School, what did you do after that? Uh, my husband, Arthur Birch, is sitting over there. Uh, my husband, Arthur, and I have four children. Oh, wow. And they they are well blessed. Yes. yes the oldest child is aeronautic engineer, and then one is a medical doctor. And That's awesome. The other one is a uh, mechanical engineer. Spectacular. And the other one was a scientist, but we lost him five years ago oh, in a I'm car sorry. accident. I'm sorry. But God blessed us so well. And uh, when I was going to Austin P back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. they allowed well, me to bring the children. Oh wow! Was it was it Austin P or was it Austin P University or Austin P College then? We it was university by the time oh. I started. I had okay. four children and a husband by the time yeah. I went to school. Yes, ma'am. When I was seventeen, I went to Clarksville Memorial Hospital mm -hmm. LPN school. Wow! So I was LPN. Mm -hmm. That's a licensed practical nurse. Yes, ma'am before I went to Austin P. And when Austin P had that first AD nursing program, mm -hmm. associate degree, yes, I was in that program. Yes, ma'am. And I do believe you were the first graduate Yes, of that? I was. I was the first one to receive my cap. Back then, nurses received caps, and I was oh, wow. first in line. That's awesome. And then after that, I went to work for the Montgomery County Health Department. Mm -hmm. But before, well, as LPN, though, mm -hmm. I was at Clarksville Memorial Hospital, and then at Fort Campbell Hospital. Oh, yes. so you have service members as well. I work in the hospital. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, I did. Well, oh, I'm a retiree. So oh, are I'm you? Okay, yeah. well, our oldest son is retired oh. Uh, Marine. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, All yes. Right. So we really encouraged each other, and my husband was in school. We put each other through college. And the children saw us studying all of the time, so we it just came natural, they, it just came natural for them. Uh, with four children, we made sure that they were exposed to the arts, and we would go to Austin P when they would have the free mm -hmm. uh, shows, and, yeah. and then we would get there in time to get the <laughs> first row <laughs> <laughs> with all all six of yeah, y'all sitting. Right? Yes. Oh wow. Um, and, 
So in your book, you you talk about a short little snippet about the inspiration for the book, which can be found here at your Clarksville Public Library. It's uh, it'll always be here. It's a it's a permanent book found in, in the genealogy realm. And you had mentioned where you got the inspiration for writing this book. I think Bert it High around School, about 2009, I believe. Yes. Okay. Bud High School closed in 1970. Mm -hmm. And then this former teacher, Mr. Joseph Roberts, mm -hmm. started the association for the Bird High School. And so it was a Bird High School Reunion Association. Mm -hmm. And one, at that last one in 2009, I was sitting there in the gym and I realized this is no longer a high school. And this history mm -hmm. will not be documented. Yeah. I contend that that was my purpose to yeah. write this book and to document this history. Yeah. This yeah. book is also in the Library of Congress. Oh, fantastic. The Doris Publishing Company mm -hmm. who published this book felt that it really needed to be in the Library of Congress awesome. because it's so unique. It says Bert. And that is because of Dr. Robert T. Bert. Mm -hmm. What's the T stand for? Tarkovsky. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have he a hard time a, pronouncing it as well. He, he he's a, a, was a famous Indian fighter, mm -hmm. chief, yes, Indian yes, chief, yes, Tarkovsky. He traveled from Casa Usco, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Dr. Burke. Dr. Burke yes, traveled from Casa Usco, Mississippi mm -hmm. to Meharry. And of course, he had some bumps along the way. He sure. got yellow fever and got sick, and but, oh. but he didn't stop. Hmm. So that was a good history for the people and the children who were going through this school, you don't give up. Yes. He went back home, he recovered, he came back to Meharry, finished his course in Meharry as the youngest and the smartest of that class. Wow. Since that time, I met some of the descendants also, and we'll go back to that. Yes, because you mentioned, you mentioned a lot of them at, um, uh, in, in the book. As yes, well. yes when I found some of them, and they had a Burt family reunion in mm -hmm. Arlington, Virginia, mm -hmm. they invited me there to speak about him. Oh, they uh, said they had a missing link in their family chain. And when I found them and showed them who it was, it was Dr. Robert T. Birch. Wow. And one of the one of the interesting articles that I had that I'd read because a patron had asked, um, it was Jackie Collins. Mm -hmm. Um um Mr. Collins had asked and inquired about the different articles about Dr. Burt, mm -hmm. and, and I went through some of them, and this is like maybe about 1923, 1924, there was a woman that got shot in the head, mm -hmm. and he operated on her, and she survived, and that just, just blew my mind, number one for the for the time frame, but it's like, wow, it's just fascinating to me, so he, he was incredibly skilled. He was, and he had a, a young child also that oh, wow. he, he removed, and he removed he did surgery that was not done at that time. He was well before his time. And if I remember correctly, he had the first hospital in Montgomery County. When he finished Meharry, mm -hmm. shortly after he finished Meharry, after he was in McMillville for a short time, but he came to Clarksville and established the first hospital in this town. Yes, and he served all people. He served all people. Yes, That's yes, fantastic. he did not discriminate. Yes, and he treated people in the surrounding county. He treated the military people. Mm -hmm. And then he went all over the world. He, he's well known. Yes, ma'am. And his history is still living. Mm -hmm. And when the, the first time they had a school for the Negro children in this town, mm -hmm. because he was such an outstanding man mm -hmm. and he lived such a life, the powers of be named that first school after him. Wow. The first school was uh, like a canopy to the Little Color Elementary School. And then when they the, named- The Bailey Cobb School? Yes. Okay. Bailey Cobb was, didn't have a name at first. Yes, when it was first built, it was the Colored Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And then they attached another building and they, to this school, mm -hmm. and it was Bird High School. Gotcha. And then when they realized that this school needed more. Mm -hmm. It was a family here, the Landers family, Suggs Landers, mm -hmm. donated the land to build the school over on Bailey Street. Wow, that's awesome. So, that's and awesome. They, they are well known. The family was very uh, well known. Um, education in Montgomery County um, went along with community members donating either land or money and or, and or time. Yes. Um, and then there was also interwoven as well 
church churches and schools were also interwoven as well. You yes. have a section in your book that um, that cover a lot of the schools yes. um, in Montgomery County. Just tell us a little bit about what you discovered. Well, let's talk about the beginning. Before we had schools, we had churches. Mm -hmm. And there were people, particularly in the community where I grew up, the Walnut Grove Walnut community, Grove. it was a white uh, family that donated that land for that school to be built. Wow. So it was not just the black people working. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people who came together mm -hmm. to build schools. But the churches had schools. This is the first school mm -hmm. that we had for our children. Wow. And then the if you think about St. John, mm -hmm. it's yes. no longer there. Yes. But I, I'm so glad that we documented it in the book and got pictures of it before it was taken down because mm -hmm. that school had a kindergarten, but they call it a daycare. Oh. But they took the babies by the time they were potty trained mm -hmm. and they taught them. And those children who went through that daycare yes. slash kindergarten yes. did exceptionally well. Wow. You're talking about people like Wilma Rudolph mm -hmm. and of course, my children, yes, they went through there. So there were other churches, St. Peter. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. It had a school. Gotcha. And So the, that community was not only you worship together, but you also learn together and then you live together as you well. You live together. Mm -hmm. they, they're the ones that had the Boy Scout troops, yes. meetings. And Mr. Corll was part of that, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. The Girl Scouts, most all civic activities related to the black community were either in the church, mm -hmm. and then eventually when we had a school, mm -hmm. it was there. The parents supported the teachers, and the principals were very selective of the teachers that they got. Yes. And the parents supported the children. Wow. Um, during during your, your time, you had mentioned it took you about 10 years or so to write this book? Yes. That's, that's a long time, and I'm sure you were um, you 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 picked up pieces here and there, and you you talk about in the in the beginning of the book. You talk about um, Harriet Tubman. You talk about um, uh, Martin Luther King. You, you talk about um, Abraham Lincoln. You talk about um, his name is Senator Sumner. You, you Sumner. talk you talk about a lot of folks. Yes. And was their influence? Um, did you learn what you learned about them? Was that influential in the book as well, ma'am? I think so because we had to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because, see, everybody did not approve of slavery. Mm -hmm. And nor were every black person enslaved. There mm -hmm. were free blacks in Clarksville yes, and in the United States along the time that there were the institution of slavery. On the 1960, an 1860 census, um, mm -hmm. one of the research that I've been doing, um, there's about, about 40 or some odd families that are, that are black that are free mm -hmm. on that census as mm -hmm. well. So, yes, you are, you're right. Yes, ma'am. And, and that is one of the reasons this history needs to be documented because I was not taught that there were free blacks. Mm -hmm. I was taught that all black folks were slaves. Mm -hmm. and But this book will show that it's the positive side, mm -hmm. that it's not so, whoa, whoa, what happened? It's showing how intuitive mm -hmm. and creative they were, that the slaves that came over were not uh, slow learners or... Mm -hmm not very smart. They were some of the smartest people who came because if one person talks about, they came with a spiritual belief. Mm -hmm. They came with skills. Yes. And this spans to show how they were able to just go right into making a living once they were free because they had these skills. Mm -hmm. So on your book cover, you have a a, a mural, a painting of Clarksville, if I'm correctly, right? Yes. And um, tell us a little bit about that. Who Who is the artist that painted that painting? The artist is in Tallahassee, Elusta Richardson. Yes. Oh, and he did some of the sketches within the book yes. of um, of New Providence. Not New Providence, but the, but the view from the Cumberland River. Right. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Joseph Roberts was very instrumental in talking with the artist to design this cover. This cover shows that this is where the bulk of the black people lived mm -hmm. back and in the area. What area was that? For the black bottom. black bottom. Black bottom. Black mm -hmm. bottom down on where it is now Riverside Drive. Yes, ma'am. 
but it has, they had one church mm -hmm. and they all went to the same church. I believe it was called Trinity, is that correct? I think so. Yes, the, uh, it was an integrated church. Oh, okay. Yes, yes mm -hmm. The poor people lived there. Mm -hmm. The rich people lived up on the hill. Mm -hmm. But the poor people all, they worked together, went to church together, they played together. Why was it called Black Bottom? Uh, if you talk with some of the locals, they would say it was because the black people lived there, but it wasn't all black. But mm -hmm. when you read the history, it says this is where all of the smokestacks were, mm -hmm. the factories, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of smog and smoke. Sure. And it was black and, and gloomy. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. well, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the book cover as well, you have several portraits on the book cover. Um, going from left to right, can you can you uh, tell our audience yes. who, who these folks are? The first person is Dr. Burt, and the second person is Mrs. Davis. She's the grandmother of the Landers family. Mm -hmm. And if you read about her in the book, and then Mr. Sam Winters, he was very, very important in this community. He was a principal. I he think, was right? the principal. He was the first white principal to go to the former all black school. Oh, wow. And then we have Mr. Shelton, Ernest Shelton Sr., who was a principal. And he followed the students after they left Cobb School. Oh. When Mr. Shelton was at the elementary school, it was Cobb School. And above him is Mr. Baylor T. Cobb. There is an elementary school named in his honor, correct? Yes. Okay. They, tell, us, tell us about Mr. The, Cobb. The once colored elementary school was eventually named for Mr. Cobb because he was such an outstanding teacher. Mm -hmm. And even it's a road named after him out in Palmyra. Mm -hmm. And the teacher revered him and respected him and often referred to him for guidance and support. Was he from Montgomery County? He from was Palmyra from, area? no, he was oh. from Clarksville mm -hmm. area. Yes, ma'am. But when he went to college, he went through bird school. Mm -hmm. By the time they finished the, they didn't go four years, mm -hmm. but by the time they finished high school, before they could even, I, I think it was the ninth or 10th grade, Yes, they were ready for college. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And of course, Mr. T. G. White, he was the last principal of the Burt School. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. George W. Brooks, he was mm -hmm. the longest principal of the school. Mm -hmm. I've seen him on many portraits. Down the hallway, right to the right next to our genealogy room, we have many class pictures, like you see, like you see behind us. Mm -hmm. And so he is pictured on almost, uh, yes, almost a yes. lot of those pictures. He yes, was the longest standing principal, and then. Mr. Allison was the second principal of the school. Mm -hmm. We have a large portrait of him right at the corner of the uh -huh. Lab. And, and Mr. Gilbert was the first principal. And on the very end, you have Judge John Cunningham, because mm -hmm. he played a significant role yes, in the evolution of education mm -hmm. in this town. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, so you, you, it took you almost 10 years to write this. Yes. To get all the information together. Yes. Now, just like just like um, a story of, of someone's life, you travel a lot. We did. And so for the book, name some of the places that you had. That you, I, I think you mentioned, you mentioned you went to the Library of Congress. Obviously, you went to the archives here. Oh, um, where else did you go? We started in Casa Usco, Mississippi. Oh, gosh. That is where Dr. Burt was okay. born. Mm -hmm. We walk, those are the prettiest red clay roads, and some of his family is still in that area. Mm -hmm. And then we left Casa Usco, Mississippi. We have traveled almost every state here, oh, and wow. we went to Canada. Really? Yes, we What's actually went Canada? to Canada What's because, Canada? Uh, number besides, one. Besides moose, What's up there? Number, <laughs> number one, they have a school named for Harriet Tubman oh. and a statue of her sitting in front of this school oh, wow. uh, with a book in her hand. Yeah, because the end of the, the Underground Railroad was, it yes. ended up in Canada. It, yes, oh, and wow. the slaves could escape to Canada mm -hmm. and set up towns. So we actually went to Canada. We went to the school, and you will see a picture of the school mm -hmm. in the book mm -hmm. with Harriet Tubman sitting there. Yes, ma'am. We went to the Eastern Shore and talked to the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and they showed us where they thought Frederick Douglass was born. Oh, wow. And then we went to the bridge where he used to sit and dream mm -hmm. of someday getting on a boat. Wow. So we actually went to that 
bridge, Location, that river. Yes. Wow. And we went to, of course, Alabama. Of course, every if we didn't go, we actually talked for to every museum, mm -hmm. archives, yes, ma'am, schools. And you've shared you've shared the story of this book and the history of Bird High School here in Montgomery County in yes. the past. Uh, yes. Um, with the historical society, right? Yes, now? I've spoken with to the historical society. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I spoke Saturday oh. at Juneteenth. Oh wow! Uh, uh, about it, I was interviewed there, and I have worked. And when I say ten years. I mean, 10 years yes, with all full support of my family, because before I decided that I needed to do this, mm -hmm. I went to my husband mm -hmm. and he actually knew more about what the project was going to entail than I did. Oh. Is so, he, has he written many books before? No, but he knows me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he knew what I was getting into. It was like, oh boy, what is she getting into now? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So we didn't, I didn't work a year and laid aside, mm -hmm. we worked every day. When I said we, my children would come, my friends would come. And, and you enlisted their help, I'm sure. Oh, sure, the whole family talked with my husband, my mother, who is now 95. Yes, ma'am. And she's still very supportive. Yes, ma'am. And I think, she's, I think she was crowned queen. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She, she was still working as a foster grandparent when she was 85. Oh, wow. Yeah, she, she's very strong. As a matter of fact, she was at Juneteenth all day Saturday. Oh, wow. Yes. So, and I talked with our children, and they all were on board. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I could not have done this yes, without the support of my husband and, and the family. That's fantastic. And then all of the bird eyes and mm -hmm. the people in the community, mm -hmm. everyone supported and encouraged me to write this book. My wife had read some of the passages in the book as well, mm -hmm. and she noticed that you had lots of biographies of former graduates of mm -hmm. Burke High School. Mm -hmm. um, was it difficult to kind of like condense it? Because I know I'm sure you want to include everyone and everybody, or was it a situation where you had to be a little selective? How, how did that process come about? I got started and I was just propelled by uh, some energy or spirit. I didn't tire. Mm -hmm. I'm just now getting tired. It was such a it was it was so enjoyable to learn and to just keep learning and just mm -hmm. keep learning because when we started, I had no idea how far I would go, mm -hmm. but I had to I couldn't talk about Clarksville without talking about Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And I couldn't talk about Cobb School without talking about Howell School because they were supposed to be sister schools. They yes. were built at the same time. Yes, ma'am, they were. So uh, I didn't tire. Talking, talking about Howell and the first black school here in town, I had er mentioned earlier before the interview that the curriculum was supposed to be the same, but it didn't end up being the oh, way. No, okay. it was supposed to be, according to, to the law, it was supposed to be separate but equal. And it, and it wasn't. Well, they didn't. We, otherwise, why did Bert become an uh, elementary school once integration? Mm -hmm. set in. They had one of the people, I think it was Mr. Clark, who said when he went to Clarksville High and saw all of what they had, he was amazed. But one thing about Clarksville High, some of the teachers there, particularly the music teacher, mm -hmm. really worked with Miss Mildred John okay. to help pull the students in. Wow. Um, and it, you mentioned integration um, a couple of times. How was that experience for Clarksville students. Was Some it, of my younger difficult? siblings. Was it, was it harder? Was it? No. Was it not? Was it? Was it a situation where there was conflict or not? Or it, it, it was very smooth. The way I understand, because I was long gone. Yes. I was in college, and you know. If I remember correctly, this is about sixty-three or uh, so. Sixty-three right? or four. Yes, ma'am. And Clarksville High. Nineteen sixty-three. We got to get our, our, mm -hmm. our numbers in there. Yeah, right. Six. Clarksville High. It was seven young people who went to Clarksville High. Mm -hmm. I know some some of my younger siblings went to Woodlawn, mm -hmm. but we didn't have all of that friction. Mm -hmm. it, it just rolled on in. So the amount of information 
in this book is just massive. It's just spectacular. My, when my wife saw it, she's like, that is a lot of history. And there's a lot of, a lot of, a very thick book. And that's a great thing because I yes. love me some, some Tennessee, Montgomery County history. Um, one of the first principals of the elementary school, if that's right, yes. uh, Principal White, um, he had a very famous son. Yes. Now, who was, who was that very famous son? Clarence Cameron White. Yes, ma'am. He was a renowned violinist. Yes, ma'am. And he did not forget his hometown. He was born here in mm-hmm. Clarksville, and he would come back. Dr. Robert T. Burt mm-hmm. would have him to come back and give concerts. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. well, that's awesome. Probably in the gymnasium for everybody to gather right. around. Um, and, and then we have Miss Lizzie Raymond. She was the first female principal in that school. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, again, just the... It is a sea of history, and it just goes on and on, which yes. is spectacular. Um, but there are certain passages that you wanted to share with the audience that, that, that you wanted to Yes. Harriet Tubman was such a significant person, and she was one person, mm. but she led a lot of people to freedom. I heard her in around about 300 or 400 some odd it was, it was. She said, I could have led more had they known that they were slaves. See, slavery is a mindset. Mm. It's like poverty. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that. And one thing she said, many slaves dream of a different and better life. Now, Harriet Tubman was also called Lady Moses, Mm -hmm. the general. And she lived up to that. It was a lot of... All rewards out for her, Mm -hmm. but she didn't stop. And she said that one person can make a difference. But one thing that's interesting, even at the beginning of time, every people, every person, all people, did not believe that slavery was right. Mm -hmm. It was, but it was the law. And one person is significant is Charles Sumner. He was a United States senator, and he vehemently talked against slavery. And when cancer was one and two, let me read you what he said. He said, such is the time simply stated. On this side are women, and on one side we have children on the auction block. Families, rudely separated. Now he said, Slavery is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's evil. But this one senator, Brooks, was so against that statement that he actually beat him with his walking cane, Mm -hmm. and he was out from work for years. But Abraham Lincoln is the one that signed the Emancipation Proclamation, and he said, I cannot be a slave, so I would not be a slave owner. And that is significant. Because some people thought that everybody, and it's not, that's not true. Mm -hmm. And we also had been a nurse. This was significant for me. Mm -hmm. We had two black nurses who actually are buried here in Clarksville in in the grave, Mm -hmm. the Bibb sisters. um, uh, At the Confederate uh, Hospital location? Yes, Mm -hmm. right. So we had people who were working even during the... Civil War. Yes, ma'am. And of course, it's a lot in the book about Fort Dawson and mm-hmm. Dover. We traveled to Dover. Mm-hmm. We went to the graveyard. We have pictures of that. And it was a white man in Dover mm-hmm. who searched the graves because slaves were not allowed to have tomb tones and yeah. burial. But the slaves are the one who carved the monument for the rich people or the white mm-hmm. people. So that tells me that the slaves were not ignorant. They could read For what write. understood, mm-hmm. they would get, write out what they wanted on the tombstones and the slaves would carve it on. Mm-hmm. So our descendants need to understand you are descendants of kings and queens. Mm-hmm. You're not descendants of slaves. You've, you've talked so much about your book in different situation scenarios and sometimes you you go you go home from the interview or from the presentation and you say man i wish i was able to say this or man i wish i could share this or is there anything that comes to mind that you wish that i wish i had put it in the book or or things like that uh, any, any anything that comes to mind like that the one thing i would like to say is 
The purpose of writing this book was to document the history. This book talks about Sharon Bryant, who was in the Nashville, Murfreesboro area, how rich he was. He was a black man. He had slaves. But the purpose of writing this book is for young people to understand that a lot of people died to try to learn to read and write. Mm -hmm. They were not allowed to read and write. They could e even, they were not allowed to teach the slaves to read and write. If the owner got caught teaching a slave to read and write, he could be punished mm -hmm. or even put in jail or fined. Mm -hmm. So what young people need to understand that their ancestors did not get up and get on a bus or get in a limousine and go to school. Some of them walked five miles. Mm -hmm. Some of them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some more. Some had to go to the creek and get their water. And you'll have testimonies of people who said they were so cold when they got to school that the teacher had to start the lesson around a heater mm -hmm. sitting in the middle of the floor. Yes. And that was the state of art. And I want young people to understand that education did not come easy. People struggled mm -hmm. to have this. And I want to hopefully that they will be encouraged by reading this book mm -hmm. that they will understand why we're saying education is important. It was something that people actually died for. Mm -hmm. And we want this book to be in every home and to be handed down for generations because this history in here from the day Tennessee was established. Mm -hmm. And if I made a point to say established, not founded. And what's, I, what's the difference? The difference is it was already here. Mm -hmm. There were people living here. Mm -hmm. There were tribes living here. Yes, but they have several versions of what it was called at that time. Mm -hmm. So I want them to see that you, we have a lot of young people now who don't value education. But I want the parents and the elder people to read this book and to hand it down for generations to come. Yes, and that is why it's so important. The, and you can take, the publisher wanted to sell this book far more than what it's selling for. Mm -hmm. And I said, the people who need to read this book really can't afford mm -hmm. more than that. And this is the reason I want it to be affordable, and I want the young people to learn that their ancestors did not have this opportunity. They did not have books to read. They had to sneak and read a book. And I want them to know that you can learn and that, as Harriet Tubman said, one person can make a difference and one person can reach by the stars. Spectacular. Um, I think that will probably conclude our magnificent interview. Thank you so very much for, for talking with us today. Um, this book, um, The Odyssey of Burt High School, can be found here at your Clarksville Public Library. Thank you again, Ms. Bell. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for me. having me. I enjoyed it very much.